The James and Greg Show. So we're back, people. And James, as I tell these guys every time we come back with a show, that this is the most outstanding show, the James and Greg Show, because we bring you the best interviews of all time. Sure, there was, you mentioned Howard Cosell, and as I always say, Donahue, and you can't leave out Ed McMahon and his, his uh, what was this guy's name? Which, which guy? Ed McMahon's boss. Oh, Johnny Carson. Carson, Johnny Carson. You know, I used to watch that show. I like Johnny Carson. I can't know. even remember his name. He's from the Valley, you know. Oh. Valley. Yeah, man. Where have you been? Evil genius here. Always behind the camera, people. But listen, today, we've got some interesting stuff here. I told you, man. I told you. We have to keep you interested. Uh, that way you, you'll watch us. The James and Greg Show. We, you know, we want you to understand that we're here to edumitate you. Right? Is that the word? Edumitate? Anyway, we're here to educate you. And so we're going to interview these actors. And what are they doing again? The actors? Yeah. Uh, they are doing a reading, and we're at this uh, beautiful um, museum in Culver City, right across the street from Sony Pictures. And James, tell the truth. We're in court. <laughs> we're in court. This time, I'm on the right side. There's no judge to convict me. Uh, but we're in court. We're actually in a courtroom, and we're going to have these guys in here in a minute, and we're going to interview them in the courtroom. They'll probably think we're going to try to send a bailiff out and arrest them and lock them up for a few days. Well... You know, actually, they're going to be sitting in, in the audience uh, in the courtroom, and they're going. Uh, we're actually sitting in the uh, jury box, so uh, we're, we're safe. We're safe. We hold all their lives in the balance right here. Me and the evil genius. Hey, but I wanted to show you guys this. Uh, this is the film that, that these guys are reading for. Uh, this guy you might know from Martin Lawrence, Tommy Ford. Uh, it's The Club. Let's get rid of that. The club. We've all been to the club. I don't know which kind of club this guy goes to, but I know the kind I like. But anyway, we won't talk about that. Listen, we love you guys. We're going to give you what you want. We're going to fill your brains and your hearts full of love and intelligence and education. So stay tuned for this great interview. This is the James and Greg Show. I'm Greg. That's James, the evil genius cameraman, saying we'll see you later. Ow. We're back. The James and Greg Show. And I found them on break. And they're actually rehearsing their lines. They're serious about this project. I mean, I love it. It's so super funny. I mean, Martin Lawrence was funny, but Tommy Ford has, is funny in his own regards. And this particular show, uh, The Club by Ian Fox, I think is going to be hilarious. So I just wanted to catch these guys in the raw and, and pretty much ask them what brings them to this show, what, 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 what gravitated them to do anything for Ian and to be a part of this. I mean, these are actresses and actors on the rise, and I want to find out so I can tell you what this is all about. All right, let's grab one right here. Um, excuse me, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Hi, how are you doing? I can't help but notice a nice little hat you're wearing. I'm doing just fine, thank you. You got your script in hand. Yes. So, what are you reading? I'm reading the film uh, The Best Friend. The best one or the club? I'm sorry, the club. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. But let me ask you, what's yeah, your character? Marcos. Marcos, and what does he do? Marcos is a is a hound. He's kind of a he's kind of a dog. He cheats on his wife a little bit at the hounds club, mixing it up. But he didn't want to tell her. He's just kind of keeping on the down low, keep it secret, so she doesn't beat up on him more. When you say her, who's her? My wife. Oh, your wife! Isn't she beautiful? What is your name? My name's Antonio Ramirez. Marcos. Antonio Marcos. Ramirez. Yes. Right on. And uh, can you pass the mic to your wife? Your wife. Yes, wifey. Yes, puppy. Hello. So I just want to know. Um, what's your name? Melody. Tell the camera, Melody. I am Melody. And your role? My role is Elena. Elena, mm -hmm. husband, wife to this guy? Yes, wife to this hound dog. And um, what do you do? I mean, what does a wife do? What do you do? Well, other basically, than... I am sick of him cheating because basically I've kicked him out of the house already. Uh -oh. And we about to lay some beat down on this man because I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> beat down, folks. I love it. All right. Good job. Good luck to you. Excuse me, sir. I see you guys Good are over luck. here uh, yeah, brainstorming your notes and yeah, getting here with stuff. you. You've got Detective Watts highlighted. Would that be you? That's me, as far as I know. <laughs> All right, tell the camera that. What is your first name and last? My name is Dustin Sisney, and I've been in L.A. for three weeks, and I am playing Detective Watts. That's not a lot of time. How did you find out about this particular deal? Uh... I think it was backstage. Backstage, Reactors Access, and I auditioned last week, and here we are. 
Here we are, folks. Indeed, indeed, here we are. Detective Watts, what is he going to do? Arrest people? Is he undercover? What's he up with is, him? No, he's, from what I've read in the script and done a little research on, he's you know trying to find out what happened. I think he's assuming what's happened with the Reverend and everything. What he needs to do is fact-checking, of course, as a detective. He can't just go around shooting people. I mean, he could go around shooting people. He could. People, but he could shoot anybody. LAPD. We'd have a whole different... His LAPD. We'd have a whole different uh, side story with this film. But, uh, no, he and Detective Collins or you know, coming on the scene. Detective Collins? See what's up and we have that one too. We're doing our beat. So he's doing his beat with Collins. Yes. Yeah. What's your first and last name, Collins? Uh, I'm Kevin Michael Shiley. And uh, yeah, I'm reading for Collins. I'm gonna call him Mike Collins. That's fine. We're gonna call him Mike Collins, people. We just like Mike. I mean, everybody wants to be, be named Mike. Mike. Mike, Mike Watts. Mike, Mike, Mike Squared. Mike Watts. Mike Watts and Mike Collins. Mike Squared. I like these two we guys. We just made that up. Hey, yeah. thanks. And did you hear about it on Actors Access or uh, Backstage? Yeah, I was definitely out backstage is what I got. Yeah, that's myself. where I got mine too. And so you guys won out in the audition contest. You guys were like the top of the cream of the crop here, right? Yeah. Yeah. We like to assume that we're the best here. That's, that we like to inflate our egos like that. So oh. That is. Sounds like a cop I'll to me. Have one speak just for kidding. Himself. I'm a good guy. I love. I support you. Believe me. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. All right, we got some ladies in here. We've got some more gentlemen. Oh, this guy is a serious-looking fellow right here. Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, am I bothering you? I'm being serious here. Yes. <laughs> All right, and your role, sir? I'm playing Donovan. I'm the house man where the uh, gentlemen uh, have their getaway. A getaway. House man. Serious guy. Donovan, I'm scared. Do you carry a revolver? Uh, I need not carry a revolver. I got too much suave. Too much suave. Donovan, and your real name, sir? Uh, Smokey Campbell. Smokey Campbell. Do you see? Uh, not alone. <laughs> okay, you got a group, right? I got a group, yes, yes. Because your name sounds like a, an artist. That's why I asked. I understand you do. No, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the chords. I just carry the name, sir. Right on. And are you, are you enjoying this? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience. You know, a group of actors getting together, performing, doing what we do, bringing joys and uh, bringing messages to people. That's what we're about. Now, you guys are reading this. Are you going to be in the actual film? Uh, that's to be uh, determined at a later time. Right now, we're getting the script off, getting the story told, and we can see what other casting and other fortune could befall us. Thank you, Smokey. And this, people, is how it's done. He said, excuse me, I'm going to step over you. He said he's just reading it to get the story told, and hopefully at a latter date he'll be called back. And I guess that's a tough um, road of an actor. How you doing, sir? I hate to impose on your privacy, but I have to. Because this is helping you. I'm going to make you famous. Uh, what's your name? Rich Fullman. Mr. Rich Fullman. And what role are you reading for, Mr. Rich Fullman? Deacon Forbes. Deacon Forbes. Now, Deacon Forbes, let me ask you something. Are you a good deacon? Very good deacon. According to Corinthians, wife, uh, husband of one wife, all your kids fear the Lord, and you have no sin, and in your house you worship the Lord. That's right. All the time. Always. Every day. In this particular comedy, is Deacon Forbes uh, one of the guys that doesn't violate the rules and regulations of being a deacon? Well, since in the, in the play he only has one line, so I'm assuming yes. One line Forbes. And in saying that, Ford, I'm going to say thank you for the interview. <laughs> got to move on. We've got a lot of interesting people here. Ladies. Ladies, I'm all the way on your backsides. Can you get them Evil Genius? That's my Evil Genius cameraman. His name is James, and he is like the greatest. Have you ever heard of a great cameraman? You're a Clint Eastwood, right? Yes. Was he not good? Yes. That's, that's the Clint Eastwood of the camera world right there. All right, so I want to ask you, what is your name? Lizanne Tulip. Lizanne Tulip? Yes. Like the flower? Yes, it's my real name. It's not my stage name. I love tulips. How long do they live? Um, not long actually. I know, I bought some from this lady and she didn't even like me and then they died and then she really didn't like yeah, me. Yeah, they die quite soon. I was an idiot. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, and, and what role are you reading for? I'm reading for the reporter, for the news anchor. Yeah. That is like perfect with your English accent. Are you <laughs> yeah. from England, British or, or? I'm South African but I lived in England for a long time, for nearly 10 years. South African, yeah. my god, I love it. Oh, this job is good. <laughs> so thank you. I'm going to interview you. your friend here really quick. And uh, I have the beautiful, dark-haired Sicilian? No. Guatemalan? No. Not even. Uh, <laughs> French? No. Spanish? Yes. <laughs> I'm close to that. 
I'm gonna give up. Mexico. Woo! Mexico is in the house. And what part are you reading for? Uh, Stacy. Stacy. What does Stacy do? Stacy is one of the wives that goes after the men. So Stacy, she's got a, a lust problem. Well, her husband is this cheating man, and she's basically catching him in action. She's giving him what, what he deserves. Correct. Ouch! Ouch! A woman scorned. Oh God, that's brutal. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> she knows from experience, folks, outside of the character. So, what is your real name? Zadie. Oh, it's beautiful. How do you spell it? Z a y d. Oh, that's a beautiful name. And Zadie, we're glad you're here. We, uh, you think you're gonna land the role for the movie? Oh, definitely. I like it. She's powerful, people. <laughs> Keep your eye on Zadie from Mexico. I will. Thank you. What is your name, sir? Daryl Copeland. Mr. Copeland. And you're reading for? Uh, assistant Pastor Bush. Assistant Pastor Bush? Yeah. Well, what does an assistant pastor do? <laughs> well, in this uh, movie, he basically wants the pastor's job. And he's a weasel. He's uh, just undermined, un underhanded. Now, do you rule that role? I'm gonna try. <laughs> I know you will, because that seems to be a really good backstory you gave me. I did not know what an assistant pastor did. Literally. Ah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Indeed. Enjoy. Thank you. See, you learn something every day with us. Every day. All right, we're back. Greg and James show, James and Greg show, however you want to put it. We're a team that's got out to make it happen. We're here. We had to migrate, people. We had to get out of there. I mean, this thing is happening over here. We've got this film going, and we have these actors all anticipating a, a big movie deal. And I'm still inter uh, interviewing these guys because I want to know which, who's going to be the next big thing. It looks like this lady here would be the next big thing. I'm I don't, moving. I don't know your I'm, name. I'm moving over to him, baby. Go. Why are you moving? That's the DJ, Curry. But you know, opportunity knocks how many times? I'm good. Go this way. She's man. good. It knocks a lot on her door. So, congratulations. Hey, sir, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? What's uh, your name, sir? Uh, James. I want to say shout out to everybody at the car watch, man. Y'all ain't believe what I was doing, but I'm here right now. We're doing our thing. You know what I'm talking about? McDonald's, it's over because we got the contract. It's going down. I'll let your boy. Uh, other than that, man, that's what it is. McDonald's is a good business. You should buy a franchise once you sign this contract. You know what, man? That's actually not a bad idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> hey, but listen, which role are you playing? Uh, well, man, it's funny you should ask me that, you know what I mean? Because there's so many great roles inside of the film, uh, when you, when you think about which role I'm playing. Or reading. Um, Lester <laughs> is who I'm playing, okay? He That's signed today, playing. people. Thank you, James. Right, right. Lester is filled. Don't even, uh, submit. How you doing, sir? I'm well, sir. How are you? Oh, good, good. You're smiling. What's so happy? Why are you so happy? Uh, this is a great project. I'm just happy to be a part of it. Happy to be a part of a yes, great sir. project. That's a good thing, you know? It is a good thing. It is a good thing. And what role do you play? Uh, you know, from this morning to about now, I played about 22 roles. <laughs> 22? Uh, but uh, tonight, or today, I'm reading, uh, I just got uh, King Curry. King Curry? What does he do? Uh, he's a radio announcer, apparently, and uh, he's just going to do my thing. King Curry on the yes, radio. Sir. Yeah, on the radio. I, I can hear it. You got the voice for it, man. Do you do this for, for, for real? In real life? I, I do do voiceovers. I do. Yes, indeed. Which which have you done? Uh, ESPN Black History Month every year. Black History Month. Yeah. Frederick Douglass. Yeah. Uh, no, not Frederick Douglass. Come on. He said every year. Who you do? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's that now? Who'd you do? It's just the voiceover for Black History Month. Yes. But which care? I mean, which person? The few, the proud, the Marines. What? I love that. Is that you, bro? No, that's not me. But oh, it's the there he is. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rob, Rob Morale. Rob Morale tells that's good stories. Yeah. He is truly an actor. <laughs> All right, as we move on over to certain people here, yes, uh, we have a cable problem. Excuse me, James. From the car wash, right? Okay. How you doing there, fella? What's up, man? Uh, what is your name? Steven. Steven. Steven what? Steven Hilton. Steven Hilton? That's right. Paris' little brother. Where have you been, man? All over Paris. <laughs> All over Paris. He's talking Paris, France, people. I mean, maybe they are doing that. I don't know. They're keeping the money in the family. Hey, but listen, what role do you play or what role are you reading for here? Uh, today's Detective Collins. Oh, yeah. Detective Collins. And Collins, have you arrested anybody today? Uh, not so far, no. It's been, a, it's been an easy day. Are you deep, deep, deep undercover? So far, yeah. <laughs> what do you feel about this film? Does it have um, aspirations? I mean, is there aspirations for it to be made, to yeah. make it in Hollywood? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's great. 
It's great. It's great. So should I go see it? Yeah, absolutely. You should go see it on opening night and then every night after that as well. Every night after that as well. Hey, thank you. What was your name again? Stephen Hilton. Stephen Hilton. How can I forget that? Stephen Hilton. Hey, man, you broke your arm. Uh, yeah, it was a fight with a bear in Alt 6. I won. A bear in where? Alt 6. Alt 6. How do you spell Alt? A-U-T. Not where I'm from. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Anyway, what is your name, sir? Gant, Richard Gant. Mr. Gant, Richard Gant. The G and the Ant come together and make Gant, right? There you go. <laughs> there it is. Hey, Mr. Gant, what role are you reading for, sir? Lester. Lester? I thought we had a Lester. The car wash guy is a Lester, too. Uh, yeah, but I was told that I was Lester. Hey, 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 hey. That's how you got your arm messed up the first time. Are that's you Lester <laughs> or am I Lester? Man, that's Richard Gant. He's whoever he want to play. <laughs> Richard Gant is whoever he wants to play. Are you Richard? What does that mean? What does Richard Gant mean? I'm the legend the, there. The, 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 <laughs> listen, he's a, he's a person of distinction. 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 Hopefully. Distinguished gentleman, Richard Gant. Did you play that movie? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> You should have. Yeah. Mr. Gann, what do you feel about this film? Where is it going to go? Well, it's going to the top, wherever that may be. The top could be wherever it goes. It could be. It could be. It seems like an interesting film. I don't know about my character Lester, but uh, it seems like an interesting film. Well, we're going to be looking for Lester. I mean, when this comes out, I'm going to definitely look for Lester. I'm going to record Lester and just keep it right there on Lester. Is that okay with you? Thank you so much. <laughs> Richard Gant, people. All right, as we move around this table here, Right past my car wash friend. I need some coupons too for that car wash, please. And uh, we're just having a ball. These people are interesting. I told you that. I don't understand none of them, but they're interesting. Anyway, we have ladies with beautiful smiles that just love to act, I bet, don't you? Yeah. And how long have you been acting? Um, like 12 years. Um, like 12 years. And is that in cat years, dog years, horse years? Turtle years. Turtle years! How long yeah. do turtles live? A long time. So I guess it's not really that long. You're supposed to know that when I ask you these questions. What's your name? Cornelia Miller. Cornelia Miller. That's a good name. Are you from Los Angeles? I grew up in Massachusetts. Really? You migrated here for entertainment business? Yes, indeed. How's it going? It's going good. It's well, fun. Well, you landed this project, and what do you think about it? I think it's really fun. I'm meeting some really great people, having a good time. Yeah, I mean, you're all cheesed up here. It's fun. <laughs> oh, I know they have medical marijuana that makes you smile. You're not messing with that stuff, are you? What? Uh, what? You see what I'm talking about? No way. But honestly, Cornelia, um, do you think you're going to make it uh, as far as one of the cast members? Yeah. That's positive thinking, people. <laughs> I believe so as well. And what do you have to bring? What role are you reading for? Right now, I am church sister number one. Church <laughs> sister number one. Is your church in South Central? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you sing in the choir? Yeah. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> anyway, Cornelia, I love it. Thank you for being a part of this and making my day. It's I, my all pleasure. the way from Massachusetts to the South Central Choir. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> and proud of it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you drawing, sir? I have no idea, honestly. No idea. I've talked to you before, fella. You have. And I've met another detective. Yeah, and, uh, they're kind of mixing, up, mixing matching a little bit what we're doing here. So. Does that scare you? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It would scare me, too, if I had somebody looking for my job. I have no idea what the future holds for me. You just stay strong, fella. I will. All right, let's move on here. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir, in the blue hat. A blue Nike hat. He doesn't even know he's wearing a blue Nike hat. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you're engulfed. Just how you know he's engulfed in the role. You, sir, you have a blue hat on. And uh, how you doing? Oh, you talking to me? <laughs> you, yes. You There's no doubt another man in I'm here. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Excellent. What's your name, sir? My name is Bill Lee Brown. Mr. Lee Brown. Is this What's Lee for? After Lee Harvey Oswald? Who named you that? How did you know that? <laughs> he's a great man. Uh, he was, uh... <laughs> Anyway, so what do you bring to this film, there, Mr. Brown? What I'm bringing to the film? Yes. I guess my my art my uh, artisan. His artisan people. I've seen that word. Now I know that word. Now your artisan. Uh, what type of resume do you have when you say artisan? I did a couple of things. You only need two. Now I've looked at the DVD cover and I've noticed that your picture's on the back. So you are actually in this film. You're going to be one of the characters, correct? Is that right? That's right. Let me see the thing. I didn't see that. Well, you start. He needs to update his freaking stuff here. Where you been, man? 
I don't know. Let me let me see the thing you're talking Engulfed about. Engulfed in your work. See, that's what I'm talking about, people. If you want to make this film, like these two detectives that are battling over this, or those two Lesters that are battling over their roles, you have to Ooh. engulf yourself in I'm your Lester. work. I don't know. So Lester? listen, he doesn't know who I am, which is a good thing, because I'm. It's all about him, Mr. Brown. Yes, what sir. role are you reading for? I'm reading for Ralph. R Ralph. What does Ralph do? Ralph. He's um, <laughs> one of the hounds. <laughs> hounds. Now, very lucky man. A dog. For a minute or two. Bloodhounds? No, I wouldn't say he's a dog. It's different between a dog and a hound. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's yeah. a male hound, a human being. I would guess he would be a male. Hmm. Yeah, that would be my guess. That doesn't sound like he's a, a good guy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And who's this lovely lady sitting next to you? That is Diane Renee. Diane Renee. With an accent yeah, over the accent accent. Are, are you a married couple? No, we're not. Well, her last name's Renee. She's married to a Frenchman, right? Hey, you getting it? You getting it? You getting it? <laughs> well, listen, Mr. Brown, uh, I'm gonna be looking out for this uh, Ralph character. I'm, I, I'm enjoying this film here. I think it's gonna be something really good. All you guys are totally interesting. Um, I, I don't know what Ralph is doing in this thing. Give me some understanding, of Ralph, so I'll know what I'm looking for. I mean, I wouldn't want to watch this. Well, you or might Ralph. not want to watch or it. Or Ralph. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then what, I won't give you something. Give let me something. surprise you. Let us surprise no, you. No, surprises are always good. I gave good. you a little bit that he's a hound. He's a hound. Yeah. Not, you didn't give me any specifics. And he's not a dog. That's specific enough. That him, Is he in the church? Is he in the church? Because the lady you've was in never, the church. You've never known a hound to be in a church, have you? That's where they no. all are, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move on, Mr. Brown. Thank you very much. Very interesting man, I must admit. Miss Renee. Uh, now yes. you're seated next to this hound. Does that scare you? Uh, no, no. He's, I mean, a, he's I, a harmless kind of hound. He's harmless. Okay, so he's okay. Yeah. So I should pretty much asterisk to where he's at in the movie and keep it there, and then yeah, just watch him too. Yeah, yeah. What role do you play? I'm um, I'm playing Maggie, a wife of a hound. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Um, I feel okay now. <laughs> There's been there there has been men that have been amputated in certain areas because they were hounds. Uh, I do believe so. Yes. Yeah. Would you do that to him? Not I I uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the wife, the wife of the hound people, Miss Renee. This is getting deeper and deeper. I don't know if I want to go any deeper in this, but I'm gonna have to, because I noticed that one gentleman here is actually reading for the uh, the the great good pastor. And um, there's an assistant pastor, but this guy is the, the pastor, pastor. And uh, here he is right here. Hey, let me ask you a question, Mr. Pastor, pastor. Okay. What, what is this thing about hounds and what's going on here? Well, there's a misconception, I think. Okay. I think uh, they're just a bunch of good old boys that have the best intentions. They're just kind of misled. He said good old boys. How old are these boys? Yeah. They're older guys, <laughs> but you know, sometimes the older we get, the more... Um, childish we become because we feel invincible. Now I had a Caucasian beautiful lady say that she's from Massachusetts and she sings in the choir in, from, in South Central and now you're saying good old boys and my recollection takes me back to the South and Caucasian men with big hairy faces. Are these the kind of boys you're talking about? Well uh, I'm not Caucasian but um, <laughs> I would say a good old boy doesn't necessarily have to be white with a bushy beard. Would, would Mr. Brown be considered a good old boy? Mr. Brown? Well, he's playing Ralph. Oh, he's playing Ralph. I don't think he'd be a good old boy. I just think he'd be one of those guys that likes to fit in with the clique. You know? He said he's a hound. He said he's a hound? He did, and he's well, happy to admit it. All hounds aren't bad hounds. Even his wife says he's a hound. Okay, I understand. But sometimes a hound is just a guy that gets out there and plays with the rest of the pack. That doesn't Are you pastoring hounds? No, well... <laughs> Not to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> so anything that's going on behind the scenes of the congregation, I have no idea. I just try to give them all of the love and guidance that I can as a pastor. I'm almost certain that the genre of this film is comedy. Oh yeah, it's comedy. We laugh while we do that. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh. Laughing hounds. Interesting. With no hair on their faces. That's and right. they're not Caucasian. That's right. This is good stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen. I want to know... What is going on with your wife? How does she feel about being a, the wife of a pastor? Because I've seen the preacher's wife, and this doesn't seem like anything uh, what I saw with Denzel Washington yeah. and you know the other lady that passed on. Mm -hmm. what, what's going on here with the pastor's wife? Well, I think she um, she's a strong woman. Is this her right here, flying to your left? Yeah, this is 
my wife. Hi, how are you, Pastor's wife? Hi. What's your name? I'm Melanie. Melanie, this sounds like some stuff I put on my sandwich. How are you doing, Melanie? Yeah, yeah. Well, she's usually awesome. on my sandwich. She's on your sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what type of sandwich do you have? I have a, a, a glorious sandwich. <laughs> I call it glorious. Where is this church located? I want to go. Oh, this <laughs> church is located in Compton. <laughs> Right off of Inglewood. I figured that. Yeah. In Inglewood, yeah. right there. Right there. It's the border? Yeah, right on the border. <laughs> right. So, Melanie, and, and your husband says that he pastures hounds, he doesn't know it. What do you think about that? Um, they're good men that are hounds. Thank you, baby. You women are okay with that. You're the second wife that's admitting that that's okay. Well, I married him for better or for worse. That's right. And at this juncture, I just want everybody to know that. Yeah, we in this. We in this. You guys, you both are in this together. We are in this. Yes. Going down together. We yes. made we made vows, and she knows that as a man, I'm going to have flaws, but I'm going to try to the best of my ability to be the best the best man that I can be. Yes. The best man, yes. not the messy man. Not the messy man. But the best. Man. Yeah, my great guy. And, and she agrees. Yeah. Yes. And your part in this, what do you have to do? Just be by my man and, That's right. and let him. And they're singing, people. Woo! I love this. I love this. Hey, listen, Pastor. I can't wait to see this when it comes to the big screen. Yeah. Uh, I hope you land the role. I think that there's Tommy Ford. You're, you're just reading this. You're, are you going to be an understudy or are you going to be the stunt man? No, I'm just reading for the great Tommy Ford and whatever um, aspect of my, uh, you know, ability or whatever I can add to this. I, I will stand in for him and when he comes I will graciously step to the side. If I was the producer director mm -hmm. of this play, I'd make him a twin brother. Oh, I, I think that's interesting. And make him a pastor too. A hound pastor. Well, we have to leave it in the hands of God. He'll handle it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. This Amen. is Melanie. Yes, I like it. Hey, people, I, I'm all messed up now. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I, I have one other question for you. I know I did interview you, but is your husband a hound as well? He is a hound. And how do you feel about it? I don't like it. She doesn't like it. Thank God you're safe. I mean, can I check your temperature? Yeah. She's alive. These other people, I don't think they're living creatures. These are people who are all messed up here, or the pastor's got something in his in his uh, holy water. But anyway, uh, so you're not happy with it. Is he gonna get? I mean, are you fixing him, or what are you doing to? to you don't live with me no more. He's out. <laughs> he's at the house. He's at the house. He's out the house. Mm -hmm. All right. And your name again? My name. His his wife. Elena. Elena has kicked her man out. This is gonna conclude this. Uh, I'm. I, I have to watch the film and, and listen to the reading to give you all more detail about this. But listen, when this hits the big screen, this has a, this is a blockbuster because it's just crazy. It's sick, okay? It's sick. Thank you. From Compton, right on the borderline of Inglewood. This is your boy. No, no, no. That's that's the other stuff. James and Greg show, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. This is what I've been holding off for the interview with Mr. Fox here, Ian Fox. He's one of my mentors and a couple of his buddies, Mr. Bill Brown and Mr. Richard Gant. And what these guys bring is black art, artist, artistry, as he said, an artisan. But artistry to this entertainment business, they all have big resumes and they're still aspiring actors, which is what makes it really good. And Mr. Fox here is a producer, he's also a filmmaker, he's a, a writer, a director. He does, you just do it all, man. And what, what gives you that drive? Uh... I love what I do. <laughs> you love what you do. How long have you been doing what you do? Since 1968. 68, you've been doing film, writing, composing, producing? I started out as an actor, and uh, immediately after that, I got into the area of production. Uh, first play I did, uh, we did on the road, and uh, we needed some money. And I happened to have some money saved, so I loaned <laughs> everybody money. So in order to get my money back, I ran the box office. Smart move. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a very fortunate move, yes. Absolutely. Now, I understand you had something to do with penitentiary with Leon Isaac Kennedy. How'd that go? Uh, well, actually, it was with Jamal Fanaka. It was Jamal Fanaka's film. He wrote, produced, and directed it. And I met Jamal when I first got to L.A. He was uh, still a student at UCLA. And penitentiary was his thesis film. And uh, it was a non-union film. And it wound up being the top grossing film in 1980. We went to Cannes Film Festival, and uh, I got a little exposure about distribution and uh, um, exhibit, exhibition of films. And that was, all came through Jamal Fanaka. That's phenomenal. Did you have any idea that it would be that big? None. I mean, no, not at all. Not, none, none whatsoever. 
Now, how did you bring I, Leon Isaac Kennedy, the, D, the disc jockey from Chicago, to this? Well, Jamal brought him to the project, okay? Uh, actually, what happened, um, truth be told, he had written it for Glenn Turner, <laughs> but he wasn't able to get Glenn to do it, so Leon stepped in pr pretty much uh, in a capacity that he was able to assist Jamal, and uh, he did Leon. Now, it was going to fast forward this thing to date, uh, brings you to this new film here, Tommy Ford, The Club, and it's going to be My Best Friend once it hits a full a feature film. Yes. Uh, you have two wonderful actors that are flanked here on the other side of this uh, poster. Now, how did you meet Billy Brown? Bill Brown and I did a play a long time ago, as I can remember, called Hounds. That's the first recollection that I have, Bill, and it was in 1980, something like that. Uh, no, I had to be over after 88, probably about 89. Was it? Yeah, 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 something like that, because I came out in L.A. in 88. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. about 1990, something like that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, and we've been friends ever since then, and uh, Bill's been a friend of mine, we've done, uh, he's been part of my Reader's Theater, and anytime I call, it's like, Foxter, what you got going on? <laughs> Let's get with it. And uh, he's just been a, a good supporter, and so has Mr. Gant. Now, you met Richard Gant. I know, I've seen Richard for a long time as far as you and him connecting. Mm -hmm. uh, how far do you and Mr. Gant go? Let me ask Richard, how far do you and him go back? Oh, when I first got to Los Angeles, I got here in 90, mm -hmm. 1990. And uh, where were you from? I was, well, I'm from Berkeley, California, <laughs> but uh, I had been in New York for the past 16 years and then got back to California in 90. Uh, I know you have an outstanding resume. Were you working Broadway down there in New York? Working Broadway. I did a Broadway show, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you made it, man. Some people don't even get that far. That's you know true, what I mean? That's right, Bill? That's right. <laughs> so uh, when you worked Broadway, did that give you the chops to do what you do now? In, uh, in no, 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 no. My chops came from, from university, from doing plays where there were many more people uh, on stage than there were in the audience long before mm. I even got to New York. Oh, so, man. you know, and then New York was a lot more stage, 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 stage. And uh, finally some films came along and uh, a film brought me to uh, Los Angeles. That was uh, Rocky Five. Rocky Five. People mm -hmm. wanted to be in that movie bad, Mr. Gann. How did you feel accomplishing that? Well, I mean, it was, you know, one of those films of a lifetime where you just so fit a role that it's, it's you and in a lot of ways you end up being defined by that. I can't say that I remember the Rocky Five. Do you, Bill? That's cold blooded. <laughs> sure, friend, everybody remembers him in Rocky Five. Come you on. See that? What role did you play in Rocky Five? Uh, I played the Don King character. Did you? Yes. Now I remember. Now how you, you remember now? Yeah, I, I remember the, all, all along. You the one didn't remember. <laughs> He's right here. Yeah. Don King, how you know? Uh, I can't remember exactly. He said 1990. Was... I don't know when Rocky Five came out. You know, oh, yeah, before. I remember him in the picture. Yeah, I'm in a big old meat coat he had on. Yeah, Jeez. big old meat coat. Can I have that? <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're gonna have to conclude this because Mr. Fox is busy. He's uh, just turned. Well, he'll be 70 soon. November 23rd. Scorpio. Sagittarius. Sagittarius. <laughs> remember that song from your hometown, Detroit? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. By my friends of Dramatics. Amen. Amen. Leo. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I do. I do. But listen, everybody, love you. Look out for my best friend. Look out for Richard Gant. Whatever he does, look out for Bill Brown. Look out for us, cause we coming on strong. Bam. And that's a wrap, people. Ian Fox, Fox Photography, Fox Media, Fox Trot Media. Stay tuned. They got some good stuff coming. As always, James and Greg Show bringing you the finest, raw and uncut, unscripted. Love me. <laughs> bye bye.